The Ravens are happy to welcome back J.K. Dobbins from the pup list. Tore an ACL in the final preseason game last year. Remember, it was like one guy after another, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. And and uh, now and Dobbins was great. He averaged six yards per carry in 2020 as a rookie, led yes, all did. NFL running backs. Um, and there was a question, there was a back and forth earlier this year, I think, with him and uh, Ian Rappaport about whether or not he's going to be ready for week one. All signs are he's going to be ready for week one. And what, what, the, think about how the Ravens fought and scratched and clawed last year through all of that adversity from preseason. They, they, they come into the year uh-huh. with a, a stacked deck and they keep it together. They, they're a team to be reckoned with, not just in the conference, but in that Bengals, Steelers, Browns, AFC North. Yes. I, I'm glad you said that. That's where I was going. I mean, watch out for the Ravens. Watch out. Uh, they were killed by injuries last year, just absolutely ravaged. And again, it's a running football team. They're built around their genius and Greg Roman and the run schemes. And Ronnie Stanley was hurt, right? I mean, they had issues. They had no Orlando Bloom. You know, this year, or or Orlando Brown, excuse me. This year, you hope Orlando. Did you Bloom? I know. I just wanted to give Katy Perry's husband a little, a little love. Ronald (laughs) Reagan, the actor. (laughs) But yeah, I I mean, we. I I think that is a very real thing. I think we got to get back into Baltimore's a legit Super Bowl contender when you evaluate the culture of their team, the people they got on their team. There's a lot of talent across the board. And I think a year like last year where, you know, they just missed out and all that, I, I definitely have Baltimore as one of those teams marked to go, you know, watch out, didn't make the playoffs last year, but I think is a serious Super Bowl contender this year. Yeah, look, I agree with you completely. And uh, I, there's a lot of Super Bowl contenders in the AFC. It's insane. But it all comes down to all these little things we're talking about. Injuries, motivation, there's a target on the Bengals. There's no target on the Ravens. There's nothing on the nothing. Ravens. It, that suits them perfectly. Yes. Because when when you have a team that is being overlooked, number one, they don't get a big head. You don't have to worry about that. If you're John Harbaugh, you don't have to worry about anybody reading their press clippings preseason. Nobody thinks anything of the Ravens. And then he can turn around and use it as a chip on his shoulder. Exactly. Nobody believes in you guys. Exactly. It's the perfect double whammy to be overlooked when you have a good team and nobody's paying attention to you. That's right. I mean, we know John Harbaugh. He's the chippiest of the chippies. I mean, he is. You know he's feeding that, you know, the feeding the beast there and pouring gasoline on the fire with that conversation. Plus... You know, as we've talked about with certain teams, they just seem to collect those kind of guys anyways. They kind of collect the guys that are like, wait, we haven't been in a bar fight in a few days. What's wrong with this? Let's get in a bar fight. We like that. That's what we do. You know, they I always say they pillage the biggest, baddest dudes on the planet every year. And they've improved their secondary. Their O-line should be healthy. If the running backs are healthy along with it, don't worry about all the, oh, no, they don't have great receivers. They got enough there. They got some young receivers and a tight end that are really damn good and an electric quarterback. And, uh, you know, a new fresh look on defense here without Wink Martindale. So I am very excited to see what they bring to the table. And I, I think you're right. I think they're one of those teams that's going to be on, the, on a mission. And especially with a quarterback – that I don't know. It's still the weirdest contract situation ever. Ain't happening. Ain't but, happening. No, I'm agreeing. So it's going to even have him more motivated. Exactly. He's be That's in what a I'm saying. Year. Exactly yep. right. So he's going to be more motivated on top of his game, so he can maybe get to the Super Bowl or win the Super Bowl, and then be like, "Here, make me the highest paid player Joe in the Flacco. NFL." Exactly. Joe Flacco. Exactly. Ten years later, yeah. the exact Joe Flacco situation. Best offer made by the Ravens. No, thank you. I'll go win the Super Bowl. I'll go be the MVP of the Super Bowl, and then you're going to have to make me the highest-paid player in football. Even then, I'm not sure the Ravens and Lamar Jackson can work out a contract without an agent, but that's for down the road. Uh, You mentioned offensive line. There is one injury issue, and it is right at the heart of the offensive line. First-round center Tyler Mm. Linderbaum. There was a report that he has a Liz Frank injury in his foot. Obviously, that's never a good thing. Here's John Harbaugh talking about that yesterday to reporters. There was an NFL Network report that um, Linderbaum is dealing with a Liz Frank sprain. Is that is that new information? Or? That's not true. Okay. That's not true. It's not a Liz Frank st- uh, sprain. There is a ligament. It's not that ligament. It's a different ligament. So he's had the Liz Frank before. There's no separation. There's no Liz Frank sprain per se. That's my understanding. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I play one in press conferences, as you know. But 
that's uh, that's what I was told. So the news is the same as the last time we talked. Yeah, he's just got he's got he's got a soft tissue, you know, type of a deal, ligament type of a deal on his foot. That uh, is not a serious thing, but you know, we want it to be right and healed. So you know, it's going to take a few little bit of time, but it's not a Liz Frank. Not a Liz Frank. Now look, he's he's got an issue. He's got to work through. But hey, anything other than a season-ending injury is a bonus after what John Harbaugh was used to last year in training camp in the preseason. He's going to be gone for a little while. That's fine. At least I know I'm going to get him back at some point, after, unlike all those guys that we lost last year. So it's just one of those we'll, we'll wait and see. And he's a guy could, you know, he's a uh -huh. classic. We heard so much about Sam Mills over the weekend. Five foot nine. The story is Jason Garrett told, you know, five foot nine, too small to play in the NFL, too small to play in the CFL, goes to the USFL and shows that height doesn't matter. And Linda Rom. Who, what he would have been taken much, much higher if he checked the boxes. Right. He very well may check the boxes by kicking the asses uh, at the heart of the offensive line when it's time to go to business. Hey, I, 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 I'm even I fall in that trap to a degree. You know, I get ready to turn on the film with him, and I go, man, he's only this big. I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, big efforts, especially up front. I want their asses to be big. I want their thighs to be big, and I want them to be able to lean and wear people out. And I think that's Baltimore. It's what they got on the offensive line for the most part, except this guy, even though undersized, is just so special. You, you turn on the film, and you go, oh, oh, okay, so what? He's 298 or 302. I don't know. I watch college football, Big Ten football. Nobody ever moves the damn guy. Nobody can do anything. you know. And you get to see him play against NFL caliber talent in that and, and he's incredibly athletic. To me, he's the closest thing I've seen to Jason Kelsey since I've been in this side of the business as far as, you know, that athletic, really athletic, can get on the edge, but also can handle the power of the big guys that are right in his face after he has to snap the ball. Yeah, I hope he is okay. I want to see the Ravens at full strength. I do. Uh, they're fun uh, to watch. You know, they're, they're a fun team as far as their culture and the edge they bring to it, and they're the bullies of the NFL, and I'd like to see them at full strength this year. I certainly would, so I'm hoping that he'll be okay and the rest of their O-line will be okay. Uh, I don't know if the rest of the AFC North has those sentiments, but I certainly do. We have said so much about how compelling the games played among the teams of the AFC West will be this year. We have given short shrift to how compelling the games played among the teams of the AFC North will be. The Steelers are going to be better than people realize. The Ravens are being overlooked. The Bengals are the bullies of the block. And the Browns, who the hell knows at this point. Well, they got but talent on that team. Deshaun Watson, yeah. they've got a good defense and they've got a good offense. They've got things. And, and they will be that team that everyone's like, ah, without Deshaun Watson, they're going to stink. No, no. And it, it, again, you yeah. don't get a big head. And you also have a chip on your shoulder. A great opportunity for Kevin Stefanski. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.